We're out here with the Walter family. We've got Trevor, Becky, Terry, and Tyler. Got the whole fam. Uh, just kind of want to talk to you guys about what you're doing here in Colorado agriculture and um, really your story and your message. Well, our uh, grandpa and dad, they were uh, from Kansas. Mm -hmm. And then in the 50s, because of drought in Kansas, they uh, landed in Weld County. Okay. Uh, and then we've been here ever since. And then uh, I, I came along and then my parents got me started in the cattle business at a very young age. And so from the very first heifer they gave me, I have cows from almost over 50 years from wow. that, that heifer. So we, got, we have that and then we've um, always been in quality cattle mm -hmm. that um, hang with marbling and tenderness. And just so you know, our philosophy here is that we don't like to go and spend money at a restaurant and mm -hmm. eat a tough steak. Yeah. And so that's our whole focus here is making bulls um, out of our cows that go to other ranchers to help improve their uh, genetics to get a higher quality product. I mean, you guys have this prized bloodline that you know people want to be a part of. We, we don't have enough pasture. Uh, right here at our home uh, area to uh, run all these cows mm -hmm. over the summer. And so. just living in this area, you guys are moving them around constantly when you're yeah. here. Yeah. So in the winter time, yeah. we're using um, farmers, ourselves and other farmers, combine their corn, mm -hmm. and then we uh, put the cows on that forage. So, right. uh, Which is great for the land mm -hmm. because you're taking out the residue and you're decomposing it into uh, micronutrients for the plant. It's a great cycle. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the most wonderful thing about cows is our rumen. Yeah. Is we're able to, they'll eat uh, all this fibrous uh, forage uh, and process that into a wonderful, nutritious, excellent tasting product. So we give yeah. uh, a lot of credit to our, our cows and how they turn out and we're just trying to add to that and um, uh, keep uh, we're, we're always uh, beyond uh, quality you know we're looking for longevity in cattle we're looking for um, growth and um, our other little niche that we have is being able to take these cows to 12,000 feet yes which uh, some cattle have uh, can develop heart problems and so we we're working on overcoming that as for our customers too that have cattle in the high country. So yeah. they need genetics that can survive. What's that process like moving, hauling oh, that's a lot that of fun. cattle up there? Yeah. I can only we invite imagine. invite anyone to join us. <laughs> yes. But I really want to experience that. Denver with <laughs> and going up the hill and Yes. It is a lot so we're slow. We go up the hill slow, and then we have to go down the hill slow. And some people go like, wait, you know, our yeah. slowness. So, what are some of the biggest issues that you guys feel like you're facing? You know, you, you well, and the biggest the, disconnect. The first yeah. thing I'd like to see is that it's families. The overwhelming um, cattle production, cow calf operations are fam family. Like that's the thing I love about Colorado is. There's no massive farms or ranches. I mean, we're all family owned and operated for the most part. We're at 96% yeah, specifically. Yeah. Well, and including feedlots are yeah. family owned. So the next step after saying that why, as a family here, why would we ever be um, uh, not as kind as possible to our cattle and take the best care possible. It's because that's what it's in our heart for our cattle. We, yeah. we just love the business. When these cows are calving, mm -hmm. someone at night, someone is there all yeah. night long. Twenty. No matter what hour, the weather is. is there. But it's a 24 hour job. Oh, yeah. It's like Seven some days, days, days like yeah. it's like you're yeah. on call. There, there. And, so, and yeah. for us being in the seed stock business where we're selling bulls, you never know when a calf you save could be a $10,000 bull. True. So right. it really motivates us yes. to 
to make sure everything is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is these are your like most prized resources. Yeah. Like yeah. that's it's so crazy to me that there's a disconnect on that piece because why wouldn't you yeah. take and the utmost care? But the of other that? thing exactly. people don't know is the work we go into selecting bulls, mm -hmm. okay, and breeding these cows for uh, the best traits. Mm -hmm. And so we look exactly at their DNA markers and plug that data into the system. We uh, you are using the newest technology and development technology to make our product better and for the consumer. Okay, what, so what's irritating to me is our society every day is embracing technology and its improvements and new iPhones and better. That, but why are is so many people against that in ag? Now in our state now, they're wanting to take a lot of our uh, good right. practices that help us um, improve our beef product and make for both both the rancher and the consumer. Consumer, this is going to cost our state. But the other thing too is. You know, everyone talks about wanting to be more efficient and greener. The cattle we have today are have produced the most amount of beef with the few amount of inputs. the fewest amount of cattle and inputs point. in in the history of the world. Yeah. We're using less land, less the resources, resources, and creating more product, which is. I mean, really, people would think you would think would be crazy. Would be, I know, you would be like the heroes, and yeah. I have no idea how farmers and ranchers became the villains of 2021.